Hey guys, welcome back. I love sharing information and I'm gonna try and get like a dozen videos out before my view counts even start to populate because this is turning out to be so much more enjoyable than I ever realized. Um, because I've just had all this information bottled up and it needs to get out there. So when I first started looking for a microwave, uh, it was a pain in the ass and yeah I titled this video 425 watt microwave we'll get to that in a minute I just had this slide up as my uh, uh, initial thumbnail thingy so you can see what's going on I first shopped around and found out that the Westinghouse 600 watt microwave was probably going to be my best fat best bet as far as low power consumption um, however here's what I found out throughout the year and a half of owning that microwave and then uh, watching newer technologies kind of evolve and uh, discovering new information. So first of all, um, for those of you who don't know, 600 watts is the heating power. That is not what it draws from the wall. So this is a huge thing that most people, I mean almost everybody who does solar for their first time on their own. Uh, doesn't have an outside consult um, it doesn't realize this See, I've even talked to solar people who install solar and they didn't even realize this but microwaves have a very low efficiency when it comes to converting uh, their power into heating watts and let's see here to skip around I'll try not to do this too much but we'll skip to the next slide which is basically showing the power consumption what is the efficiency of a microwave and generally you can see it's 64 percent is what uh, wikipedia is going to tell us here so an 1100 watt uh, microwave that draws 1100 watts from the wall this is hard on most inverters if you have something smaller like a 1500 uh, or a 2000 watt inverter i personally have a 1500 pure sign and i feel like that's really the price point for most people doing small solar systems so i wanted to stick with that inverter and kind of build everything around that um so yeah as you can see that's only a 700 watt microwave my 600 watt microwave uh pulls about 950 watts from the wall now this is fine it works however it's not convenient to have to turn off other electronics and whatnot just to run my microwave I want to be a little more comfortable than that and even have the ability uh, to put it on a smaller inverter for some people who want this microwaving feature but uh, you know are not gonna really want to shell out the money for a 1500 watt inverter and so to those people I have an awesome solution Thanks to the newer inverter technology, um, that's possible. But before I get to that, I'll just kind of run over uh, what most of you might be thinking or I've already looked at if you've been searching for microwaves. Um, so there's like this one, 750 watt countertop microwave. It's even smaller at only a half a cubic foot. But if you look at the power consumption, it draws equal to, if not more, than this little Westinghouse. Uh, and there are some benefits there are some that are wired up to 12 volt so you can bypass an inverter uh, but that's still a considerable amount of power to be drawing uh, regardless if it goes through an inverter or not um, so I drew up a little calculation here uh, my 600 watt at 64 percent draws 937 watts from the wall and uh, for many people that might be just fine if you've got a really big inverter if you're doing like a 3000 or 3500 watt inverter you're gonna be like okay that's fine a couple caveats though about this style um, you should know that non-inverter microwaves what they do when you do anything besides high power to achieve lower medium high or medium or low settings all they do is toggle the power on and off which is very hard on the inverter for example I put it on high and I can consistently run uh, that microwave no problem but the second I lower it to something that starts to toggle on and off with all that juice just jumping up and down um, it trips the uh, surge protector on my I mean the circuit protection on my uh, inverter so it can't handle the on and off 
feature of that. So I basically was limited to only microwaving on high, which uh, is not ideal, as any as you most of you know. That's just gonna cook the crap out of things, and make it uh, too soggy, and then uh, not give it time to evaporate some of that moisture, and uh, also very uneven heating because now in the 0.6 cubic feet, 0.5 cubic feet, this lower range, you're looking at a niche market. So anytime you have that little niche market, that means you're not gonna get a lot of options and you're not gonna have the latest technologies. <clears throat> so this is really basic microwave oven technology. And uh, personally, I think they all look like crap. So <laughs> I was really happy to find out uh, uh, the benefits of inverter technology, which I'll get to in a minute. Okay, so uh, what I did in order to get most of these uh, power ratings, which I'm bringing this up because this is a very handy tool to have. Do not buy the kilowatt. Do not buy this guy. I bought two of them, one from Fry's directly, and then I bought one online. Both of them burned out anytime I wanted to put a load over a thousand watts through it. It says on the back of the unit it can handle 15 amps, but no, it can't. It cannot handle 15 amps. It burned up at only like nine, eight or nine amps. Um, I ended up buying this unit, not this exact one, but this is the unit right here. Um, it goes by many different brand names. You could just pick one up on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below um, to a prime one, but 20 bucks. It's not the biggest investment and you'll be super happy that you did get one because uh, it'll shed some light onto uh, your your battery draining situation depending on if you're having issues or if you need to figure out where things are, where all that juice is going this is how you do it uh, through the inverter anyways um, for the DC components you're gonna want a clamp meter so you can just put that around the wire and it can tell you how many amps is flowing through that wire when the appliance is on um, that, that's a little less straightforward than just plugging it in and going. So I'll stick with uh, explaining this side for now. Um, but yeah, so if you, you're searching around and you see one that looks exactly like this, it, it's going to be the same manufacturer. Don't freak out too much about the name brand or where it's coming from as long as you know that um, you got that guaranteed non-DOA <laughs> certification that you get from Amazon or eBay or other marketplaces. Uh, you should be solid okay so now that we got that out of the way I'm gonna close some of these slides so that we can open up the next few um, on my inverter microwave so inverter microwaves the way they work is they are uh, converting power to uh, DC which allows them to be variable output so as I explained before with the AC transformer it just kicks on, kicks on, kicks on and kicks off and that is uh, very inefficient for one and very hard on the um, inverter, your battery inverter that is not the inverter that's built into the microwave. Oh wait, uh, no point in even saying that. I'm talking about a microwave that doesn't have an inverter. Um, so anyways, yeah, it toggles on and off and doesn't have the ability to have a variable output. So when we talk about inverter microwaves now, when you lower the power setting, you actually are using less power. This is the key. So I have the Panasonic uh, inverter microwave, which I'll show you in a minute. It's a 0.9 cubic feet. And the cool thing about that is as you go up in size, you have so many more options. So I was able to get a, a microwave that has a, a nice, pretty stainless steel finish and the button configuration I love so much more because it has tactile buttons. Okay, I'll get to that in a minute. For now, I just wanted to share the actual numbers. So anything below power setting of three is when it starts to toggle on and off with the power. But starting at three, it levels out at 425 watts guys this is so awesome to have found a microwave that if I have so many other things going on I don't have to worry about turning stuff off I just hit the power setting low and yeah I have to do a longer time setting but that's never been a concern for me I got time it's no big deal and I'm usually just microwaving something that's less than a half a pound so 
you're talking four minutes max to uh, get something warmed up from frozen. So great, super great. Actually, I should say six minutes max. That's kind of what it ends up being. Four minutes is my little uh, pizza pocket things that I eat sometimes. Uh, but yeah, either way, those are cool. Uh, little warning about this, do not do raw meats at the power level of three because in my experience it had a really hard time cooking thoroughly and I had a little stomachache once when I was uh, the second or third time I cooked some hamburger patties in there and I looked and it was pretty much as brown as you could expect but uh, I think it just didn't get the internal temperature high enough to kill all the germs and bacteria. Um, so for that, I recommend a minimum setting of you know, five or six. It should be much better. Um, but anyways, for most conditions of reheating food, you're gonna be happy with the three setting, only pulling 425 watts. And then at setting four, it's closer to 700 watts, kinda has a big jump there. Uh, setting five, it went up to 800 watts. Setting six, 970 watts. Uh, setting seven, 1020, uh, eight, 1060, uh, nine, 1100. And then full power was usually around 1200 watts, but I did see sometimes it just randomly was like 1260. Um, so, just be advised on that. <clears throat> My uh, 1500 watt inverter can handle it, but up at these higher settings, I definitely had to have nothing else turned on. Because of those of you who don't know, 1500 watt inverters can't really handle 1500 watts. Typically, uh, unless you buy like the most expensive inverter, then I would expect that they'd flip this around. But most of the time, they rate the 1500 watts is what it can. Um, is going to be pulling from the battery so that's like before inverter loss and uh, whatever wire loss you might have I mean voltage drop from the uh, system being full power which sadly mine drops from like 120 and when you do a full load like this it goes down to like 106 and 107 and guys I have an Ames inverter it's supposed to be really good quality big name brand so don't think that it's just some cheap uh, unit and is the reason that happens. It's kind of an industry problem. So just be advised, I'll talk about inverters another time uh, on another video, but this is microwave stuff. So basically anything over 1200, 1300 watts is kind of the limit of my inverter, uh, 1300 I'd say. Uh, so so you know what to get, you know what to expect, What what you can expect uh, from your inverter if you get something similar. Um, I'm not 100% certain if it needs to be pure sign. Uh, pure sign is definitely said to um, be more beneficiary to appliances that use transformers and AC motors. Um, however, I could not find an adequate source for documentation as to whether or not um, it affected them in a negative way that which would deteriorate the life obviously uh, if it causes it to get hotter or something like that that could be more dangerous but as far as I know if you wanted to try a modified sine wave inverter um, I would do a little research first on that uh, I just went the safe route because I need the 1500 to be running my refrigerator and my air conditioning unit off of one inverter which runs 24-7 and then I have an auxiliary inverter uh, that's modified sine wave but I haven't been running that yet on the microwave on that side yet so maybe I'll talk about that another time and do when I do a review on the modified sine wave inverter and some more testing um, okay so that's pretty much it this is your lowest power consumption of course I'm not like saying this is the only brand and this is the only one you can get it just has to do with the inverter technology. So if you find another one with inverter technology, by all means, go out there, test it out. Uh, I picked up one over at Walmart. Unfortunately, the smallest, I mean, not the smallest, the only one they had with inverter technology was 2.2 cubic feet, which was super unrealistic. Um, on the lowest setting, it was like seven or 800 watts, which worked, but that's kind of really close to the unit I already had and um, 
So having to put the unit on the lowest setting all the time just to run it, eh, it kind of just felt like a waste. And also it was way bigger than I needed. So I don't need to put this on the lowest setting, it's just nice to have that feature. Uh, or you can even use something as small as I would say an 800 watt inverter. Um, I wouldn't go any smaller than that as this number does have a little bit of a surge. It was somewhere between five and 600 for a second or two before it mellows down to the 425 on the lowest setting. Um, so be, be aware of that. You can't just go ahead and get a 500 watt inverter and be like, oh, this is gonna work. No, it probably will not. Um, I know that there are 800 watt pure sign inverters out there. I have one. Uh, I have a few inverters that I'm going to be using for doing different testing at different um, uh, size inverters for all these equipment and appliances that I have so stay tuned for that video coming up in the next couple weeks and lastly I'll just show you real quick what I got it was the point oh I think I said 0.9 but actually it's a 0.8 cubic feet that's the one I got this guy right here I'm not clicking on any links because I don't really know yet the, the rules and regulations on YouTube if you're allowed to show other people's websites or what the deal is. I'm sticking with just the Google search results for now because I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's safe. If, if it's not, if I'm breaking any rules, please let me know. Um, but anyways, I'm very happy with this guy because looking at most of the ones on the market, they have buttons like this where you actually have to put a considerable amount of force onto the, um, they call it, you know, like a touch button, but it's not touch sensitive, it's not capacitive touch. It's, uh, it's still tactile, it just, it, it's like a really flat, you know, you know the type, we've all had that microwave before. So it's not really convenient. This one actually has a clicky um, tactile button that takes almost no pressure to, to press. So when I'm pressing for the power, hear that? I can just fly through straight down to the power setting I want and reset, clear, start, whatever it is. Um, my microwave's right up here, that's why <laughs> I was able to do that real quick and easy. But yeah, the other thing is, I hit the power setting, I wanna do my time, I don't gotta do any funky like, okay, let's start with minutes, then seconds, no. It has this rotary dial right here, which is awesome. You just start turning that knob, and the faster you turn it, the faster it jumps up, you can just jump by minutes really quick, and as you slow the dial down, it starts to click into seconds, uh, tens of seconds. It's so smart the way it works that uh, I absolutely love that dial. I think interfacing with electronics, a dial is a must, just like the, uh, the Surface, the Microsoft Surface, how they got that cool dial feature. Um, to add on to the mouse and keyboard experience. It is definitely an input device that is going to be integrated into many electronics, I predict, in the future um, because of its ease of use for any, any time you're, you're adjusting a variable setting that just goes up and down. A dial is the way to go. And then I hit start and I'm microwaving. You know, typical regular stuff. That's it though. Um, looks awesome. Very affordable price. I bought mine over at Target because I love to buy online but ship to stores since I'm doing the whole mobile home life type thing. I don't have an address, but that's so easy to get around, guys. Every single retail store out there allows you to ship to store, and even if you buy on Amazon, you could ship to an Amazon locker, which are all over the 7-Elevens here um, in Southern California. I'm sure in your location they might choose whatever popular convenience liquor store it chain is you know affiliated with that city or, or, or uh, county but uh, here it's 7-eleven uh, anyways that's it I hate that I continually talk too much and these videos get really long so I'm gonna cut it off and that's it I'll see you guys in the next one thanks for tuning in